Hi, everyone. Welcome to our iSpring Solutions webinar series, where every week we talk about e-learning trends, share iSpring tips and tricks, and cover clients' cases. I'm Paulina Ionina, the Community Manager at iSpring, and I will be the moderator for today's session, where we will talk about iSpring Learn LMS and what features have been added to it. And as a presenter, I have invited my colleague from Customer Success Department, Alex Green. Hi, Alex. Thanks a lot for tuning in. How are you doing? Ready for the session? Uh, doing great. Always ready. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm super excited for a uh, feature reveal <laughs> for our today's attendees. Okay, I think at this moment we are more than ready to begin. So, Alex, I'm happy to pass the mic over to you. All right, perfect. Well, just in case, I'm Alex. Glad to see you all here today. During this webinar, I will cover the new features and the updates that will be coming out soon. Just in case, to those who are new to iSpring, iSpring Learn LMS is an advanced solution, which is yet quite easy to use, uh, that covers a number of business cases, including internal corporate training, partner channel training, um, as well as B2B sales. iSpring has been on the market for the past 20 years uh, and is recognized as the most user-friendly solution out there. That's pretty much how we've got the 54,000 clients that we currently have and 148 of them are on Fortune 500 list. We work with both SMEs and large corporations. I'm sure that you can find some familiar names on the slide right now. Um, we generally work with a number of different industries, but the ones on the screen, specifically retail, manufacturing, healthcare, education, and IT companies are the ones who purchase our solution the most. I do have to say thank you to all of you for submitting feedback to providing um, all the comments on our solution, because that is pretty much how we improve with every update. All right, so today we will cover two new features that were so often requested by you, by our clients. Specifically, they, they are blended learning and content separation. So let's cover them one by one. I will start with content separation and then we will move to blended learning. I'm going to stop sharing my webcam right now and I'm going to share my screen with you. All right, so currently all users registered on the platform with a role higher than a learner can see all of the content that has been uploaded to the account. With this new update, courses can be stored in different projects with different access restrictions. This kills several birds with one stone. First, different users or department admins will only be able to access specified courses and create their own. Second, it allows you to restrict editing so that other admins will be able to access the courses and enroll users, but they won't be able to change the content or delete it. And third, course authors will be able to keep drafts right on the platform. All right, so let's stop talking and explore the new feature. Let me click on what used to be the courses tab, now called learning content. All the materials here are split into projects. We've also added recent, start, and shared with me folders for easy navigation. But let's create a new project by clicking on this plus sign here. In this pop-up window, we can name the project. I'm going to call it a fire safety project, add collaborators, and decide if they'll be able to edit the materials or just view them. In my case, I want them to only be able to view the materials. 
So I'm going to click here and then on the add button. So if the person has editing rights, then they'll be able to rename the project, edit all the materials that are part of the project, invite other collaborators and set their access level. If you choose to only allow them to view the project, then they'll be able to see the content and settings applied to it, but they won't be able to make any changes. As well as if their role is higher than a course author, then they'll be able to also enroll users um, into the course. Perfectionists will absolutely love this one. Now we can choose to add different folders in this specific project to keep everything nice and neat. By clicking on this button, you can either upload some files from your computer or choose to create a course, learning track, page, assignment, or add a link to an external web page. If you are new to iSpring Learn, a course is just a single piece of training on a certain subject, whereas a learning track is a predefined sequence of courses that makes up to a complete training like onboarding. I'm going to create a fire safety course. Let me open it to rename it. And I am going to add a pre-uploaded iSpring Suite module here. There are also situations where you want your colleague or a subject matter expert to only have access to this one course and not the entire project. You can do that by clicking on this specific course that you're looking to share on these three dots and choosing the collaborate option. Here, you only need to click on add collaborators and choose the ones that you would like to share access with. An important notice here, when any admin runs a report, they'll see stats on all the courses on the platform, even if they don't have access to these courses. All right, so that was a quick overview of the content separation. How is everyone doing so far? Any questions? In any case, just shoot them off to us in the chat and my colleague from the tech support will be able to assist you with them. Meanwhile, let's move forward to the blended learning. It's another cool feature that's already live on the platform and allows a blended learning approach. Blended learning is especially useful when you need to optimize your training processes. Learners can take the theoretical part of the course at their own pace and then attend a webinar or an in-person meeting to consolidate their skills and knowledge. Let's see how it works in iSpring Learn. Again, for those who are new to iSpring Learn, here is how you can create a meeting. We'll click on the Trainings tab, then choose to add training, and in this window, we can start setting it up. You can create any kind of meeting in-person, online, and so on. When it comes to the online meetings, we have a built-in integration with Zoom and Microsoft Teams, one of a kind. But let's say it's a mandatory in-person fire safety training. So let me type the name as well. I'm going to choose it to be next Wednesday at 10 a.m. It's going to take us just 30 minutes. I'd like it to be in room A12 and it's going to be 15 participants. During this meeting, I'll be the instructor. Once you're done, just hit save. And here you will be able to add other details. So if you have a morning and an evening shift, you can create different sessions of the same meeting. I'm going to rename this one 
to the morning shift or a morning session. And I'm going to create another one for the evening shift. It's going to be on the same date, but just a little bit later at 4 p.m. Eastern. The room is going to be the same, but this time I'd like Polina to be the instructor. Now, the only thing left to do is to click on the Create button, and you are done. I'm not going to go into more detail about meetings and trainings at the moment, but let us know if you need more info in the chat, and we'll get back to you after the webinar. All right, now let's go to the Learning Content tab. I'm going to choose our fire safety course right here. And I'm going to add this in-person practical training to test our learners. I'll click on Add Training and choose the fire safety training we just created. Voila. We now have a course where learners will have to take a theoretical course first and then practice, which will save us a ton of time. So assigning a course that includes a meeting works the same as before. Let me open the Enrollments tab. Then I'm going to click on the Enroll Users. And I'm going to select the whole company. All right, the only additional setting here is that you can either enroll users into a specific session yourself or let them choose it. I previously mentioned the difference between a course and a learning track. Now let me show you how it works. I'm going to open an existing learning track right over here. Mm -hmm. So, as part of the learning track, I'd like to test my learner's knowledge at the end of it. To do that, I need to add a course with a meeting. I'll click on the Add button right here and click on the course. Then we simply need to select this one and it will pop up at the end. All right, so there are different course completion orders. Please note, if you have a free course completion order, then the learners will be able to view the meeting details at any time. And if the course completion order is sequential or by days, then learners will get access to the meeting after completing all the previous courses or at the specified time. So that was a quick overview of the new features that we've added to the platform. How was that? Let's begin our Q&A session so that I can answer all of your questions. I would also like to hear if you have any other feature requests. Please submit them in the chat as well. Well, actually, Alex, um... We have lots of questions, and um, here I would like to ask you if you are able to see the chat. Actually, let me bring my camera back as right. well. Okay, so uh, let's cover the very last one. Does the training features work with Teams as well? Nice is asking. With Teams, Microsoft Teams, yes, definitely. Uh, that is... Uh, also, a recent update uh, that we've added on our platform. So far, iSpring Learn is the only LMS that integrates with Microsoft Teams accounts. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you so much. And Raul is interested um, if it's possible for a learner to cancel his or her enrollment in a training. Yes, uh, the learner can actually open the meeting and uh, they can either choose to participate in it or cancel it. Mm -hmm. And another question from Nice. What about the content that is not contained in a project? Can you separate that too, like the uh, pre-uploaded module, for instance? Mm -hmm. Pre-uploaded modules. Um, just a moment, please. Could you please repeat the question? Uh, sure. What about the content that is not contained in a project? Mm -hmm. Can you separate that too? Right. So uh, all the content that you have uh, in iSpring Learn will still have to be in one of the projects. Um, you can definitely have modules uploaded in there, courses, learning tracks, as well as pages, assessments, and links to external web pages. If you choose um, to have um, a folder that will have most of your content, you can also create um, a specific project devoted to it and keep all the content there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I see a question from Dan. Can you duplicate the session training or copy it for doing it again? Let's say once a week or once a month, for example. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that at the moment we don't have this specific functionality, but either case, thank you for letting us know. Uh, again, any feedback is precious to us and for our development team. The courses are now called learning content and then you structure into projects, but where would I store now ready-made courses? Is there something like a course library? Mm -hmm. Right. So that is one of the main ideas of the projects, since you can create a project specifically named um, published courses or uh, finished courses, where you can store all the content that you are actually using for the training. And you can use the rest for drafts for team collaboration purposes. Uh, I see a comment from Adrian. I second dance requests. Recurring events would be very beneficial. That's awesome. Thanks a lot for sharing. And um, a, a question for to everybody else here with us in the webinar. Uh, if you have any other feature requests right now at the moment, this is the great time because I know that our product development team is definitely going to be watching uh, this webinar recording. So. Um, this is a great way for you to reach out directly to them. Okay, and um, Kunal is curious, does the LMS support course, course capture system? Um, Kunal, I think that uh, either me or one of my colleagues will need to reach out to you to discuss this question in a little bit more detail to better understand it. Um, there are lots of different ways for you to transfer content from one place to another. Uh, so there will be a little bit more tech details involved to answer your question. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much, Alex. And Thomas um, is asking, is there anything in plan to link a booking and payment system with the LMS? Um, Honestly, Thomas, I would rather not spoil it, <laughs> but uh, I believe that yes, uh, there will be an update uh, in the future when we will be adding uh, something similar uh, to include the e-commerce functionality. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Um, another question from Nice. Can you make the completion of a training a prerequisite for taking the next module or course? Um, of course, definitely, definitely. That's part of the learning track functionality uh, that basically you can make it sequential, um, the course completion order, meaning that a learner will have to complete module number one before they can access the second module and so on. 
And here we come to the next great comment. In my LMS, it's still courses. Do I have to activate the learning content to see it? Right, uh, Sebastian, that is an upcoming update. Uh, at the moment, it's not available on the accounts yet, uh, but just a moment, let me check. Right, but next week, uh, we will be releasing this new update. You will receive an email um, with more details about it uh, and about the day the maintenance would actually take place. Perfect. So I assume the next question from Raul, when uh, would it be possible to have the new features in the Sandbox trial accounts? Uh, in a week, in a week. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Any other questions, everybody? But actually, thanks everyone for being so active. That means a lot to us. Uh, let's read another comment together uh, from Dan. It might be nice to have a table format for updating the participants' results of a meeting. For example, did they attend meeting or not with all participants listed? Instead of having to click on each participant and drop down to pick the result, maybe just have the result and a checkbox. So I assume that this, is, uh, this goes to the pile of the feature requests. Right, right. Any updates about the reports? Don't know about this one. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case, if Anna can support me on this one, <laughs> that would be great. But not that we know of, as far as I know. Um, Raul is asking, a learning track is not displayed in the catalog. How can a user self-enroll for a learning track? Mm -hmm. Right. So that is not displayed in the catalog. Right, exactly. That's the whole idea behind uh, behind the catalog feature itself. Uh, the catalog is where you can add different content for the learners to be able to self-enroll into this um, training. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot, Alex. Uh, Jessica is asking, is it possible when adding a page to a course that you don't have to have the introduction chapter? An introduction chapter in the iSpring page. Um, that's actually a good one. Anna, yes, would you I, mind I if I mm -hmm. ask for your help on this one? Um, so, mm hmm uh, Martin is asking if a learner adds a course from the catalog, can he delete it? The learner can't delete a course, mm -hmm. uh, but if they complete the course, uh, the completed courses, the course will go from the ones that are currently assigned to them to the completed folder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we still have, I, I think, maybe about three or four minutes if you still have any other questions. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, this, uh, this is currently, or there is currently only one level for the catalog. Is it possible to have sub catalogs? Sub catalogs. Um, that is not something that we have at the very moment. Uh, but it would be great if you can share more details on how you're looking to apply this. Yeah, actually, you can either send your message. Let me give you the all the places. <laughs> uh, so it's you can send the message either to sales at iSpring.com. So even Alex could take care of that one. But the most, um, the best way would be to send it to support at iSpring because our managers, our specialists um, are looking into the cases of, of usage and then uh, pass it on to the product development team. So that would be the most effective way to submit your feature request. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
<laughs> Adrian says, I love rules, ideas, subfolders, and catalogs would be helpful. Catalog, catalog to recorded webinars and folders of different webinar types organized within. That's amazing. Thanks a lot for sharing. Um, uh, Jessica, uh, could you answer my question about copying and linking to modules? Is it possible to stop users from linking when creating a new course? Is it possible to stop users from linking? Um, could you please share some additional details on this one? At the moment, uh, when you are adding, let's say, an iSpring Suite module to a course, you can choose to create a separate copy or a linked copy. So when you're creating a linked copy, means that changing the original module will also update it in all the courses where it's been previously added. However, when it comes to the users, it works a little bit different. Uh, each course has their own enrollments. Is it what you meant? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's the problem that they can link. Mm -hmm. All right, Jessica, we will then reach out to you to discuss it in more detail, I guess. Another another interesting request or question maybe, how about adding the ability to block file downloads from the knowledge base? Mm -hmm. All right, so the knowledge base uh, quite often works as a, as a place where you can add different forms and different files with the specific idea so that users can download them. Otherwise, if you don't want the users to be able to download these files or courses, uh, you can simply create a, a folder in the catalog um, that would let learners see the courses, see the files, uh, but without the ability of downloading them to their devices. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Alex. Um, Dan says, being able to better control a learner's ability to skip through a YouTube linked course, so it requires them to watch the entire video would be nice feature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, is it possible to give a content author only one option to copy or link a course? Give a content author. Miss mm -hmm, is asking to prevent people from linking when they should be copying. Mm -hmm. That would actually require me some time to process. <laughs> exactly. Um, other authors. All right, Anna, I think that would be the question for you. All right, mm -hmm. perfect. Mm -hmm. It's been resolved. <laughs> and I appeared for a second here. <laughs> okay. Um, any? Okay, awesome. Um, is it possible to prevent a learner from being able to access the save as command when they right mouse select a video that is part of a course? Mm -hmm. So you'd like to protect your content and from being copied. Okay, if you don't mind, I can step in. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so to prevent users to download inserted video to the course, you can just cover your video with a transparent shape. And in this case, if you user right click it, there will not be any save as option. Thank you. Great, great <laughs> advice. <laughs> um, yeah. Another question is from Kunal. We upload the iSpring content on our own LMS through Amazon for example, on slide one, I have a timer for 10 minutes and don't want students trainer to end the module before time and it gets captured in our CPS. Is it possible in learn? 
how uh, you set up what the courses will send their progress to your CPS. So if you want um, users to spend a minimum time duration on the slide and only up to that to be able to proceed, you can definitely do that in just to set up the mi um, minimum time um, under slide properties and set up the limited navigation type. So in this case, you will not be able to proceed until they view the slide till the very end. But on how it will be captured in your CPS, it's, um, I believe this should be set up on their side. So then you publish the course with iSpring, uh, just using my computer tab, it will be just converted to HTML5 format. But for sure, if you publish it for uh, using the LMS tab, it will be, um, published to specific format, SCORM or XAPI, and all of those formats uh, automatically send the information to your learning management system. Thank you so much, Anna. And while you're still here, could you please take a look at the question from um, Gina? I didn't understand the resolve to eliminate the save as method. Maybe you have some um, some message or or screenshots that you can share on this workaround. So we basically have a short video tutorial, and if you want, I can send it to Jane after his webinar, so you can take a look at that and see if it works for you or not. Perfect. Thank you so much. So let's cover the last uh, question for today and then wrap up our session. So Martin is asking, when we already have enrolled people in a course and we need to change something in the PowerPoint original file and do the upload again in LMS, we have some issues about the learners who had already completed it. The status changes back to in progress. Any clue, any information on that? Right. So there are two ways uh, to go about it. The first one that you are currently using, I believe it's uh, basically deleting the existing course or the existing module and uh, basically uploading it, the, the, the updated version, uploading it to the LMS. And that's when the connection ruins. If you want to keep the stats, if you want to keep the settings that were previously uh, applied to this, um, to this course, you can use um, the feature to replace the older module with the updated one. We have it in the iSpring Learn uh, help docs in our knowledge base. Uh, I think it would be great if uh, I can send you the link after the, uh, after the webinar. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Alex and Anna, for taking care of the questions. Thanks to everybody for, first of all, coming today and for being so active. Um, that's just amazing. And hopefully you enjoyed today's session and are looking forward to using these new features. And if you have any feature requests ever, please submit them to the support at iSpring.com. Uh, either Anna or her colleagues will be more than happy to look into the cases and just pass them on to our product development team. And at this point, I wish everyone a lovely day and we'll see you at the next webinar. Bye everybody, bye Alex and bye Anna. Goodbye. Bye.